Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California here in Studio MC2 at Quicksurf Internet Studios. The Geekinator is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Uh, please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. And with that, let's go ahead and get into some of the cool stuff that I have found for this episode. Over at Engadget, Bree Pettis on the MakerBot Digitizer, he says that uh, they are building an ecosystem. It's a video posted online uh, over at uh, AOL. And it, he's basically introducing the MakerBot Digitizer and, you know, they're trying to build a, uh, a MakerBot uh, ecosystem where you can easily manufacture things. So I thought it was pretty interesting. Uh, I thought I'd, I'd let everybody uh, in, uh, in my audience take a look at it and uh, check it out. It's pretty cool. From Ars Technica in the Technology Lab slash Information Technology section, a $199 4.2-inch computer is Intel's first Raspberry Pi competitor. It's called the Minnow Board. We talked briefly about this, I believe, on the show on Linux News Log, uh, mainly because this runs a, a variant of Linux. But um, this is pretty neat. Uh, with the Raspberry Pi, Arduino Do, and BeagleBone, the world's... The world is full of cheap, tiny computers that can be used by creative developers in everything from robots to space flight. One of these platform, uh, one thing these platforms have in common is an ARM processor. Now they have some competition from Intel with its Minnow board. A uh, one hundred and got something stuck there. A one hundred and ninety nine dollar computer in the form of a four point two inch by four point two inch board with an Intel Atom processor. This is pretty cool. I actually want to check this out for one of my projects. Uh, the reason why I want to check this particular board out is because it comes with a SATA port. Now, I would really like it to come with a bunch of SATA ports. Uh, this is a storage related project. Um, but uh, one SATA port would be nice, assuming I could get the, the board for, you know, less than $200 in bulk. This is something I might potentially be getting some uh, funding for on Kickstarter or something like that. But uh, uh, first things first, I need to get this and see if I can even get bulk pricing and come up with a solution for uh, for this, this project I'm working on. But uh, still pretty neat. Um, definitely... Uh, something uh, worth looking into for sure so uh still like i said 199 dollars is a little on the high end for my particular uh my particular uses use but uh if i can get it like for 79 dollars that would be awesome anyway definitely take a look at it from The Verge, Ubuntu's smartphone OS will be ready to launch on October 17th. Now, we talked about the Ubuntu smartphone OS and the Ubuntu smartphone uh, on, the, on this, this show's sister show, Linux News Log. And um, this was quite some time ago when we talked about this, too. It's been a few months. Uh, the Ubuntu Edge smartphone may have missed its crowdfunding goal by a huge amount. But the Ubuntu Touch operating system is far from dead. It, has, it now has a planned release date of October 17th, according to a blog pro post from Canonical employee and QA community coordinator Nicholas Skaggs, who said that Ubuntu is committed to delivering an image of the OS for supported devices, which is the Galaxy Nexus, the Nexus 4, the Nexus 7, and Nexus 10. Um, that's, and that uh, post has been backed up by a post on the Ubuntu phone team mailing list that confirms phone 1.0 will be a reality in four and a half weeks. Pretty neat. Uh, in the meantime, uh, post, uh, both posts implore you interested users to download the current images and report bugs to the QA team to help them get everything sorted out before the October launch. So, uh, Ubuntu OS is moving forward without actual hardware uh, and just 
be, uh, delivering an image, assuming you have a supported device, uh, which will be the Galaxy Nexus, the Nexus 4, Nexus 7, and 10. So if you have one of those phones and you want to try this out, please try it out and let me know. I would love to hear about uh, how well it works. So definitely let me know. From uh, makezine.com, going big with Legos. Innovation happens anywhere, anytime, with anything. Sometimes you don't need a bunch of expensive tools or multi-syllable equipment. <laughs> yes, I said syllable. Uh, to engineer the ultimate mixture of art and science. Sometimes you only need imagination and a few Lego. Well, those and one highly accomplished Lego builder. So. Uh, last spring, the author Ping Fu commissioned 3D Systems Brian Cooper to create a masterpiece made completely of Lego. And an MIT graduate and software engineer, uh, Brian is known uh, in the Lego community for building uniquely large gear articulated robot models. And his instructional ebook, Technomica, has helped people build big all over the world. You can see his handiwork in Lego shows as well as in TV and movies. So, uh, I thought this was pretty cool. After this, a, a year of work, uh, he produced, uh, a, an amazing blue cat named Geo. It's a testament to how far imagination can take you. It's made entirely out of Lego. It's pretty awesome. Definitely check it out from slash gear. The PlayStation four specs have been dropped by Sony at the Tokyo game show keynote. That is right. Uh, Sony just held its life with PlayStation 4 Keynote, dropping a bunch of details on its on its next generation console specifications as well as info on its on uh, some of uh, the PS4's exclusive games and the gaming experience as a whole. So, uh, pretty interesting. The PS4 is harboring an x86 processor, uh, uh, with 8 gigs of unified memory. Wow, uh, there's a supercharged PC architecture all, all on there. There's a supercharged PC architecture on board alongside the CPU with storage coming by way of a local hard drive. Also tossed into the mix is an enhanced PC GPU. So basically, it's a high end gaming PC. Um, I'm curious what operating system they're running. Uh, according to this, the PCU architecture has the GPU and the CPU co-joined on a single chip, which serves to keep the price of the console more affordable. The use of 8 gigs of memory, meanwhile, came at the beckoning, beckoning of developers, with Sony originally wanting to use 4 gigs instead. Well, if you have a 64-bit processor, why limit yourself to 4 gigs? The price difference between 4 and 8 gigs is, you know, I I'm sure if you're manufacturing millions of these, it's a huge difference. But in reality... The price difference between four and eight gigs is negligible. And I would, if I were buying a PlayStation 4, I would totally be willing to pay for the difference. Um, eight gigs just gives the platform so much more longevity than four gigs does. Anyway, um, uh, making developers happy leads to more games and more games leads to a better end result from users is the philosophy behind the decision. So, Pretty interesting. Again, I'm curious uh, what operating system it's going to be running. Probably some proprietary Sony thing. But it begs the question of whether or not uh, Linux can be installed or some, you know, open source operating system can be installed. This, you know, the PlayStation 2, there for a while supported installing Linux on it until Sony kind of took that away. And there's this huge, uh, it, it was a mess. Anyway, um, so I'm curious if Sony will allow installing other operating systems on this since it is x86 uh, should be pretty interesting. I, I can't imagine it'd be that difficult to get something working on a PlayStation 4 since it's x86. From CNET.com, the world's greatest Star Wars collection is now Guinness certified Rancho Obi-Wan in Petaluma, California. That's right. I live in Petaluma, California. Believe it or not, I have not actually been here yet. Although at work, they've had uh, this posted. You, they have a special where you can get in. Anyway, uh, it's got more than 300,000 artifacts, artifacts and has officially gotten the Guinness World Record. If you've ever wondered who had the largest Star Wars collection, Guinness has cleared up any uncertainty. Uh, I, 
actually would love to to go see Rancho Obi Wan, and I've been meaning to for quite some time. But I just, you know, life happens, and sometimes you just cannot escape life. From Hackaday Bitbox Console, an open source gaming rig. Rig. A simple resistive DAC is all you need to drive a VGA display. Combining that with an onboard uh, DAC for audio, the STM32F4405 RGT6. Boy, that's a mouthful. Looks like a good choice for a DIY game console. The Bitbox console is a single chip gaming machine based on the STM32 ARM processor. So it's kind of a DIY type thing. Uh, it looks really small. So pretty cool. Um, definitely check it out. They've got a Vimeo, a three-minute Vimeo video you can uh, watch and kind of get a feel for uh, what they're trying to go for here. I thought it was interesting and thought I'd share it with you guys. That will do it for this edition of the Geekinator. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes. You can find those online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. See you then. Bye.